Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. And hello and welcome to uh, this unprecedented episode of B-Movie Mania, a new unique concept that we've never done. We're not going to watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, I thought we, what are we even doing here? Why we just I, finished. Why yeah, didn't yeah, okay. did I watch that movie? Guys, I thought it would be fun. Oh, by the way, listener, uh, thanks for listening to B-Movie Mania. I'm Mike Hayes. Jason Holes is this guy. Hi. And uh, Chris Hudson's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's been mummy fried. I've been on a mummy um, kick. Yeah, uh, but I thought, guys, I thought it would be fun to maybe get together after the, the last season here and just kind of go over the movies we watched. Give a little season three roundup kind of a deal. Sweet. Yeehaw. Because, I mean, there's a lot of questions I have that either I've forgotten because it was so long ago or that, um, you know, just, just I still have from this wonderful season we had. It was we, pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty magical. Yeah. <laughs> like, would you say it was Prince of Magical? Prince, Prince of Magical. Uh, yes, there's yes, that sound Yes, bite. he would. <laughs> yep, yes, he would. Uh, One last yeah, so time. We... <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen again. Here, got the clinkies, too. Maybe. Oh, good. There we go. So so we went through... We, we watched... A bunch of movies this this year, this season. We watched Meet the Feebles, Virtual Combat, Bad Ben, Galgameth, Biker Worry Babies of the Zombie Babies from Hell, Microwave Madness, Highlander <laughs> Two, uh, Bikini Hotel, Terror Vision, The Greasy Strangler, Craw, The Sea Monster, Manborg, and I had a bloody good time at House Harker. Hey, hey, which, hey, Mike! I want to say that yeah. you microwave massacred the title of Microwave Massacre. Yeah, well, I was going to let it go. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate I, it because we're had, trying to keep hey, this short. I'm trying to be true to myself here. I had to call you out on this. I call bullshit <sighs> artist, Mike. Bullshit artist. <sighs> what are you going to do? Uh, you all right. messed up the title. <laughs> <laughs> this makes up for the pedantry. Okay. So so anyway, so I've got a list of questions here uh, that I'm going to ask. and We can kind of go through these and just kind of spark some conversation about season three. How's that sound? Cool. Ooh, I mean, yay. Oh, boy. All right. Well, Chris, since you're such a spoiled turd, uh, what what was your favorite movie this season? I mean, you know, it was pretty tough. It's got to go between our last two of the season, House Harker or Manborg. And I go back and forth between them because I've been thinking about House Harker a lot, and it's it's I'd give it a higher score now than I did. Wow. <laughs> what would you give it? You... I'd give it like a... I, I, you know, I think, looking back, I think I lo- it just edges out Manborg. I think I gave Manborg a 95. I'd probably give House Harker a 96 this time. Wow. Like well, I'm sure the, wow. the, so the boys over there would be happy to hear that. Yeah. It's really stuck with me. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Jay, what about you? Um, well, I, I gave House Harker a 100. I gotta go House Harker. Yeah, I love Manborg. True. I love Manborg. But I gave Harker a 100. I'm going Harker. Well... It, it sounds like we 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 really ended on a se- uh, like a high note this season because I also was torn between those two that and uh, Biker Warrior Babe I really liked Biker oh Warrior Babe yeah that hit with you <laughs> it really did uh, but I definitely have to go Manborg I mean I gave Manborg a hundred so uh-huh. hey, obviously can, can I just say that uh, on behalf of the missing Paul Brooks I'm sure he would choose Greasy Strangler absolutely yeah that's move. absolutely true yeah <laughs> well then but Jay what about well, well, I didn't. Well, then, Jay, what would you think is your uh, least favorite movie? Oh, that's easy, Mike. I'm going Bikini Hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Hudson? Oh, man, I feel like I'm the only one who has a different least favorite movie. I picked Ooh, Bikini oh. Hotel. <laughs> no, I think I'm the only one who had a different movie then, because uh, I picked Bikini Hotel. <laughs> oh. oh, damn it. And it had Julie yeah. Strain. Like it had Julie Strain, and we all yeah. picked it. JJ so you, North too. Yeah, it, you know it's bad if it's got yeah. Julie Strain, and it's still the worst picked movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay then, Chris. 
what would you say was maybe the best performance in the film? Oh, oh, by far. Or on the season. In the whole season. I mean, other yeah. than your own as my favorite B-movie maniac, Mike, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with the Greasy Strangler. I believed that dude was the Greasy Strangler. Wow. Wow. Yeah. All right. I mean, it was one of the puppets out of our... from Meet the Feebles. I mean, either or. <laughs> We're starting to veer out of our, our, our lanes here. Jay, who do you think had the best performance this season? Yeah, I was not expecting that. Um, okay. You know, there were so many, but I landed on Michael Ironside in <laughs> Highlander 2 because he's bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um, I, myself, uh, I, ha- I have to say that the performance of Biocop in Manborg. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 who, who <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't recall who played that role, but whoever did that gets my vote for best performance this season. Just a man who screamed a lot. <laughs> but it was well, amazing. Yeah. It was oh, the way he said why am I alive is just <laughs> why am I alive? Shut the fuck up. Oh. And Mike, I want to. I really appreciate you editing in that soundbite there. I know that this is a short episode, but thanks hey, for going the extra distance. And we appreciate that in your right sacrifice. There. Thank you for it's your. It's all service. right, guys. It's all right. Um, so, Jade, how about how about this? Speaking of punishment, or maybe pure giggles, uh, what would you say was the worst special effects of this season, or what movie had the worst special effects? <laughs> okay, this one's easy, but I don't mean this to mean that it's not enjoyable. Because I don't think it's arguable, or maybe it is, we'll see. I'm going Biker Warrior, babe. (laughs) They were terrible special effects, but that's not to say I did not immensely enjoy them. I don't even think I would change them. Yeah, yeah. But they were technically the worst. That's that's an understandable uh, standpoint there. Uh, what about you, Chris? Uh, I'm going to have to give this one to Fungicide. <laughs> what the best part of this season? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, yeah, Biker Warrior Babe. Let's go with that one. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, my, my vote actually goes for something different, though. I understand the Biker Warrior Babe. Uh, I think Galgameth did because <laughs> when there was – they had the rubber suit stuff, which wasn't – great or bad but they had they tried to do some cgi like the spell like a spell that happened or yeah, something and it was, there was some pretty it bad. was it just looked like ms paint on the screen <laughs> <laughs> um all right well chris now back to you what was your biggest surprise this season um i would say i had two biggest surprises if i may the first is how much i enjoyed bad ben i didn't really mm-hmm. expect much of that and um the other surprise was just how much I hated Bikini Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> damn it, Chris. That's my su- biggest surprise, too, oh, how it. bad Bikini damn Hotel it. was. <laughs> Stole your bit. Oh, <laughs> you can edit that. That's, that it wasn't a bit. It's a genuine answer, and I'm glad we're being genuine here. Uh, Jay, what about you? Okay, I'm going to make it quick, but I had a top four in no particular order. Ooh. I'm just, yeah, there was right. a lot of surprises yeah. for me. First one, I had never seen Meet the Feebles, so... The ending of Meet the Feebles was pretty <laughs> shocking. Um, the other thing, and I, I, if if you listen to our Microwave Massacre episode, it's all over it in the end. Realizing that the wife, May, might have been trying to kill Donald the entire time, and it puts a whole new spin on the entire movie at the end. Yeah. If you really look into it. Um, third, the ending of The Greasy Strangler, because oh, what was that? Yeah. And four... Yeah. How much I immensely enjoyed the trailer for Biocop at the end of Manborg. <laughs> so, was sorry, yeah. I couldn't decide between those, so I said them all. That's all right. Yeah. That's Biocop all right. was probably the best thing we watched all season long. All right, so so I'm going to... We're running short on time here. Not to say we shouldn't talk, you know, about things if we need to, but I'm going to set a little... Uh, Put a little bit of this on, this little background music, a little bossa nova okay. for us back Ooh, here. Nice. And this will maybe help us get in the flow, pop these answers out. We'll get through it. That way the listener can go on and listen to, I don't know, uh, some other podcasts. So, All right. Uh, let's get them out of here. All right. Let's do, <laughs> let's do this. Hudson, what's the hottest scene in this season? Oh, man. Again, I've got two. It's either Julie Strain's job interview from Bikini Hotel <laughs> or... <laughs> Or the walrus banging the cat on his desk. <laughs> Damn it, Chris! <laughs> My, mine is the blowy scene in Meet the Feebles. Let's <laughs> get the blow job. All right, I got a different one. Um, All right. 
<laughs> Highlander 2, dude. Lambert in the alleyway. Oh, that's he right. He just walks out and says, I'm an immortal, and they just go nuts Damn, in the I mean, alley. I'm, I want to make make out with you right now just for hearing that, Jake. Yeah, I see. It works. A little warm in here. Oh, goodness. Uh, I was also going to say, I was second place was that, that scene in House Harker when Paige is uh, being fantasized. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, pretty good pretty good scene there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, Jay, what two movies would you like to exist within the same universe? Ooh. So potential crossover is the point. Yes, yes, Ooh. sorry. Potential crossover. Easy. Bad Ben and uh-huh. Biker Warrior Babe. I want to see Nigel Bach yell at demon babies. <laughs> That's a good pick. It's a good That's one. It's a great combo. <laughs> oh, uh, Hudson. You know, I uh, I went back and forth on this a little bit between a couple obvious ones in my mind, but I just I just really think that I would love to see what how the Planetary Patrol from Craw handles the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> Ooh, that's a weird one. I like it. <laughs> uh, I myself would love a crossover of. I want to see those House Harker boys try to try to convince a town, and then it turns out to be real. Uh, the cast of Meet the Feebles, just living puppets, <laughs> like puppets are real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if anyone can pull off a, a Who Framed Roger Rabbit yeah. style with Meet the Feebles, it could be those guys. <laughs> That's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hudson, do you have a favorite line uh, from this season? Sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about sodomy. They always think it very hard of me. But I enjoy the act of sodomy. They might call it up a bar on me. <laughs> oh, I love that song. It's good it's to hear so it every good. time. It's so good. Thanks for playing uh, it just now, Mike. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, Jay, what about you? Bullshit artist. <laughs> yeah. That was my that was my original pick. Gracie Strangler. <laughs> uh, my favorite is. Uh, I feel like the Robin Hood of fetish porn <laughs> from House Harker. <laughs> oh. uh, Jay, who's who's the funniest villain you think oh, from this season? The Baron Manborg. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah. The I, Baron is amazing. I think that's the only one you can really pick for this one. That's that's my pick as well. Yours well. Oh, I got a different one, boys. Oh, wow. I'm I, I think the funniest villain was the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> Big Ronnie, yeah. Wow, yeah. Big Ronnie, baby. I'm surprised to hear that. I <laughs> yeah, thought I Baron, thought for sure I thought the Baron was going to sweep that one. Oh, I mean, I love the Baron. Don't get me wrong. No, I, I, I like sh- that everybody's <laughs> got different answers. This is good. Yeah, that's that's kind of the idea, I think, here. Uh, Chris, what character would you like to take out for lunch? You know, I would really, really love to share a nice microwave meal with the Baron. <laughs> With the Baron. With, With the, the Baron. Baron. <laughs> it is future microwave. Yeah, yeah you can just talk about microwave. hell and torture. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> we have so much in common. And smoking. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jay, what about you? Okay, I want a table for four. I'm Ooh. sitting at the table, and in walks Walter from House Harker. Uh-huh. Yeah, baby. Next comes in uh, Connor McCloud of the Clan McCloud. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at the last little bitty seat is that crappy little fly from, from Meet yeah. the Feebles. <laughs> me, me. <laughs> tell all the gossip. <laughs> It'd be great. Get fancy fancy about us. <laughs> I want the poo-poo platter. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm surprised no one said this one because my one I want to have a nice lunch with is Mr. Tom Riley. Oh, oh bad, bad. Yeah, Great yeah. answer. Yeah. Uh, just, just to find out what's been pissing him off lately. <laughs> what, what specters have been annoying him? Um, Jay, is there a thought you had during this season that you were least proud of? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I said in my final review of The Greasy Strangler that I can't wait to never watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I really do regret that because it has stuck with me and I absolutely would inflict that movie on other people in the future. 
<laughs> Good. <laughs> Chris? Um, you know, I kind of had a bit of a sexual awakening this season and thought, and thought that I would just like to see how special the pee-pee specialist is. <laughs> From Cry! <laughs> oh, oh, boy. I don't feel proud of that one. Yeah, no, I, mine's along those same lines. Like, that certainly is one that could have could have hit me with that. <laughs> uh, I think mine <laughs> was probably just, like, being really bummed about the fact that we weren't watching, like, a sexy version of Bikini Hotel, at least. <laughs> like, <laughs> just just looking for the objectification I need. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Mike. Yeah. Cinemax was right, a thing. Hud- All right, Hudson, do you get this? <laughs> Great segue. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what movie do you think had the best cuisine? I mean, the the obvious answer is Microwave Massacre, right? I mean, we're all thinking it. But honestly, I'd go for a little of that explosive mac and cheese from Manborg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Or, fuck, which, who's the other one? Uh, Me? Well, you know, Mike, the obvious... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Jay. Uh, I'm going crabs, please. I'm digging the obvious answer and saying the Parisian cuisine of Microwave Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> I am similarly doing the obvious answer, Microwave Masker, but I'm more interested in that giant crab sandwich he had at the, at the construction site. Absolutely. Nobody, but genuinely... No, nobody picked one of the prostitutes they wanted to... Oh, boy. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> Chris, I think you have a new least proud of the Oh my god. There it is. Well, hey, this is part, this is what this is my least least proudest moment of the off season. When we do the recap of the off season, this is my my line. Oh fuck. All right. Uh, Jay, who who would you cast in any of these movies this year uh, that you think would make the movie more fun? Like what's your ultimate like fan cast? Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm going to guess that you guys are going to be surprised by this. Um, I'm going Nicolas Cage in Biker Warrior, babe. Ooh. Oh, I can see that, yeah. That'd be pretty good. Give me Nicolas Wait. Cage versus bad CG hell babies. <laughs> now, it, do you want him to play Zip, the main uh, character? No, or the, do you want him to play maybe the, the love interest, uh, Doc? Yeah, instead? I could see... Uh, you know, I'm, I don't care. Um, just put Cage in it. But oh, okay. um, I, mean, I wouldn't want. I, I mean, he could be a babe in the movie, but uh, I'd be fine with him playing, playing Doc, yeah. too. That'd be great. What if he's just the actual babes? What if he plays all oh, of God. the zombie all babies? Oh, the a whole new, wow. Yeah. He, <laughs> wow. He could, he'd put on, like, baby face skin and, like, crawl around to get into the mood. All right, all right. We know the director of this movie. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, like, Jer- <laughs> Jeremiah, if you're listening, yeah. get Cage Deep to fake do a that. Hollywood remake. Deep fake that, that <laughs> version of this movie. Get it over to us. Yes, it's deep fake it. It's oh, God. Uh, Chris, how about you? Um, you know, we were talking about how great Daniel Day-Lewis would be in something earlier. Uh-huh. And I, I just thought that uh, I think he would be, make a really great Michael Ironside just in Ooh. life. Just not, just not just in Highlander 2, but everywhere. Everything? Everything, just... yeah. He would do an amazing so, job. So you want Daniel Day-Lewis as Ironside in, like, any of these movies? Well, in every Michael Ironside movie. I mean... Oh, okay. Wow. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. The Total Recall. You really game. just, like, nukes the site from yeah. orbit there. You Chris. know, V, The Final Battle. Be yeah. Great okay. You know, scanners? Yeah. Psh, put Daniel Day-Lewis in Scanners. That'd be great. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Mike, uh, what do you got? Per- per- personally, yeah, personally what I want... Is I want to take Lorenzo Lamas, my favorite action beefcake. <laughs> oh yeah, and put him into virtual combat. Ooh, Ooh, that's nice. That's a good one. Yeah, but not as Don the Dragon Wilson's character. Oh, of course not. I want him to be the love interest. Ooh, <laughs> the, the, the cyborg. The, yeah, the cyber lady love interest. So then, yeah, man, can you imagine Lorenzo Lamas and? <laughs> Don the Dragon Wilson just going to town in that disgusting bathroom. (laughs) I'm thinking that red background and that opening scene just as a rainbow. Oh, man. That would be something. Uh, That'd be a new hottest scene for you, Mike. (laughs) I'm going to dream about it tonight. I am warm Um, again. Boy, oh, boy. All right. How about this, Chris? Mm -hmm. Uh, What movie world would you most like to live in? Um, I would most like to live... I mean, I've got not just a world, but like a specific place. I would like to live on the other side of the sexy neighbors from Microwave Massacre. (laughs) (laughs) Strategic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just far enough away that I won't be killed and eaten, but I still get to see the sexy neighbors. 
I like the far enough away is two houses over. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donald's pretty lazy. Yeah. That's what true. do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, where are you living? Um, it was a, a toss-up between um, House Harker and Highlander 2, but I'm going to go Harker because the supernatural is real in Harker, and that's interesting, whereas Highlander 2, it's just like a handful of immortals, and I'd probably it'd just be like living on Earth. And and yeah. it would have to live under that crappy it, shield. So shitty I'm, going, uh, I'm going House Harker. That's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Personally... And I, this is going to be a surprise answer, but I'm going Bikini Hotel. <laughs> well, because I mean, there's got to be some sexy stuff in there somewhere. We just didn't get to, the cameras weren't near it. So let me live around that hotel. It was the fun like, 90s. I think that could be fun. Like I, I, I think if you say Uga Shaka three times at night, then you'll, uh, you'll be transported. Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka. I'll make sure I say that. <laughs> As I'm dreaming about Lorenzo and Don the Dragon <laughs> in a bathroom. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Jay, mm -hmm. what movie do you think should be remade into a bigger budget film? Oh, easy. It's it's Bikini Hotel. Because... <laughs> it is. Because... <laughs> the, you could God do the it. most <laughs> with the money on that one. The rest of them, I think, are good the way they are. Like, if you name any of the other movies we watched... It's pretty much even Craw. It's bad, but it's like yeah, Fine, it's a yeah. bad kaiju movie, and that's what it is. Like I don't want to see a good version of Craw, but <laughs> a good version of Bikini Hotel, something might be able to happen. Sure, sure. What about you, Chris? You know, I, I have to agree because I think with a better, bu bigger budget, you'd have a better script, better direction, better yeah. actors, and hotter babes for Bikini Hotel. I you'd mean, probably have Dwayne the Rock Johnson in it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine the Rock and Julie Strain? Ooh, ooh, ooh boy. Wow. Um, well, personally, I think Biker Warrior Bay versus the Thump Base blah, 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 should be done. Granted, I love it in the state it's in now, but can you imagine, like, Hollywood level zombie babies? <laughs> like, I, I with like Nicolas Cage, just deep faked babies. Well, well I'm telling you, well, that's that's when you can really get the Nicolas Cage in there. Yeah. With the big yeah, budget, you can exactly. afford his, his, his rate, and then he is he is the babies. <laughs> Personally, I'd put Nick Cage in the uh, all-female D&D group that gets eaten. That's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he the one that eats the burrito and shits? Himself? Yes, I want to. I want to see Nicolas Cage eat a burrito and shit it out in that exact CGI role, babies. Yeah. No changes to the no script. Changes. No, no. Nope. I, I think he also needs to be all the babies in that movie still. So he plays oh, her, yeah, yeah. and then the, he comes out of the toilet as a baby and then eats her ass. <laughs> oh, God, eats his own ass. <laughs> Well, you know, we already know that Nicolas Cage can eat a peach for hours. <laughs> what can he do to a butt? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys, let's get serious for a second. Let's get serious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's blow past this one, because this is dark. <laughs> oh. Chris, which of the films from this season... Man Borg! ...most reflects the state of America today? Man oh, Borg! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris, RJ. Uh, the most reflects the state of America. Uh, sadly, meet the Feebles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it takes yeah, a I was foreign film Highlander to too. really reflect on us. Okay, all right, yeah, <laughs> nice. But your guys' answers are better. <laughs> There's nothing good here. <laughs> no, a man Borg's a really good answer. <laughs> yeah, Jay, which movie would you most like to see developed into a video game? Oh. The Greasy Strangler. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Me too. Chris? See, I got something a little bit different because, I mean, Ooh. I think I looked through the list and I think every movie is kind of would make kind of a good video game. I mean, Craw, you've got an action game. Bikini Hotel, kind of a comedy, sex, kind of le leisure suit, Larry sort of thing. But I would yeah. really, I have no idea what sort of video game Meet the Feebles would be. Oh. <laughs> I would just like to see that. It would be, yeah. be weird. <laughs> um, okay, then Chris. Uh, how about who do you think had the best dance moves in the season? Oh come on, Justice! Definitely yeah, justice. justice. Come on, Jay. Do you do you diver diverge? From I this? do diverge from that. But oh yeah, oh, there's only yeah, one man. Contender. Big Ronnie. Yeah. You see him oh, in that club? Yeah. yeah. Forgot. Yeah. Forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. Who's the most badass character from this season? Without question, challenge me, <laughs> Tom Riley. Wow. Bad Ben. <laughs> wow. He did not give uh. a crap that there was a ghost in his house, and I would. <laughs> and he and Tom Riley, paranormal investigator, he went toe to toe with a coven of witches. 
Yeah. Wow. That's, that's yeah. Uh, what What about you, Chris? You know, you're kind of making me rethink my answer, Jay. But I mean, I still have to give it to Michael Ironside. I mean, come on. Okay. I mean, he I mean, is. Yeah, he's, he's pretty. You know, they're both up there. They're both up there. I notice I said Michael yeah. Ironside and not General Katana. <laughs> well, it's because well because you did specifically mean Daniel Day Lewis as Michael Ironside. Yeah, like, yeah. that, that yeah. adds double, a level double of the badass. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the most badass this season was Walter from Harker. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. He was good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, guys, one last question. And this is, I think, the most important question. All right? All right. Chris, you go first. Ooh. Fuck, Mary, kill, Craw, Galgameth, and the Terravision monster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh. All right, all right. Well, I thought that all... stood for most fun kaiju. <laughs> uh oh, nope. Well, first of all, I would kill Galgameth because uh huh. I mean, uh, well, I mean, according, <laughs> according to the Korean version, you know, he was a threat to society, and I can only imagine that Galgameth would be no different. So he'd eat all the metal in the world and destroy everything. So we got to get rid of him, toss him in mm-hmm. the salt water sea, and he's done. Um, I would probably marry the Terror Vision monster, monster because he gets uh, a lot of a lot of cute uh, Medusa babes, and I think the Terror Vision monster would be down for a little uh, menage a trois, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I would fuck Craw because that movie can fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, how do you rate? Wow. Okay, I have to rethink this because. Uh, okay, I would um, marry Craw. Because uh-huh. he's a mercenary. Crawl's a mercenary, so he's probably good with money. You know, just yeah, pragmatic sure. stuff. Um, I would bang the TerraVision monster. <laughs> it's all slimy <laughs> and weird. Like, I just, yeah, let's do that. And then I'd kill Galgameth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mark? Uh, I, I would marry Galgameth, guys. I wow. think he's a little sweetie. <laughs> um, and, and I would kill Craw. <laughs> and I would fuck the brains out of Terror Vision. Well. <laughs> I mean, you know Terror Vision can get down. It's in the bed with the bodies and grandpa. Like the parents and grandpa yeah, yeah. in bed puppeting him around, making him do the sexy things. <laughs> oh. Like, give me some of that action. Oh. You want menage a trois, give me menage yeah. fucking a lot. With, with a pool with a pool filled with sex lubricants. <laughs> yep. Yes! Yeah. It's perfect! Maybe Spiro's in there somewhere too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God oh, bless shit. his soul, Spiro. Oh, guys, uh, this has been a really fun season. We should do this again sometime. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we do get to do it again, because just because the season ended doesn't mean we're done making shit. Oh, my God. What are we going to do, Mike? No, we're just going to cut it out to a little, you know, uh, every other week kind of thing, and and but we're still going to have weird, extra weird stuff. Like, uh... More Dark Hollywood. We got a really good Dark Hollywood episode coming up. You know, I really like the yeah. announcer for that one. Yeah, Love the announcer's the announcer. pretty sexy yeah. voice. It makes he's great. Sounds like he's got some big ass cojones. Oh yeah, <laughs> the biggest, the biggest assest. Uh, and we'll have we'll do more B movie r- movies watching, <laughs> just, like the Jerry Seinfeld one. We're gonna do quick takes, right? Where it's the quick takes are gonna be just two of us per movie. Yeah, and It'll be a little shorter. Mike, I believe your quick take is up first, correct? It is, but I haven't picked a movie okay. for Chris yet. <laughs> All right. I actually... Wait, I'm doing a movie with Chris, too. Oh, uh, nice. really? I am. Can I... What is it? I, would you like to know? I would love to know. All right, Chris, are you ready to hear this? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. Okay, gentlemen. We've talked about doing this for years. We have flirted with it, and now it's time to consummate the damn thing. Oh, yeah. We are going to experience, as a quick take, <laughs> the Hulk Hogan sex tape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now, Ooh, wow. It. The reason I say experience oh and not watch is because it's illegal and we can't find <laughs> it anywhere because nobody wants to get sued. So what we're going to do, we have secured a transcript of the events that transpire <laughs> during the Hulk Hogan sex tape. And we are, oh my God, for my yeah. quick take with, with Chris, and Mike, you are absolutely welcome to join. 
We are going to do a <laughs> how dramatic... How many rolls are there? What? I don't know how many parts <laughs> how, yet. How many rolls are there? We'll find out. Paul's putting it together. We are going oh to do God. a dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan sex tape. Nice. Oh, my All God. Right. Chris, you're going to play Hulk. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. We will fill in the rest of the parts. And the way it's going to work is Paul is going to email... We're going to start recording the episode mm -hmm. and Paul is going to email us the script so we open it up and we're all seeing it for the first time <laughs> no preparation nice. we're just going that's into amazing. it hey, so um, that's coming up that that is I, coming up in a few weeks I just want to let everyone know that um, I'm going to get really into the I mean I'm talking Daniel Day Lewis levels of method acting <laughs> I'm going to read this script naked <laughs> oh god <laughs> at least you're not going to read it racist yeah we will do some, we may have to do some bleeping absolutely yeah. there may be some censoring in the episode totally 100 percent will i know some of it that's in there yeah, we are it's not pretty, releasing that content it's pretty rough nope. so i'm not going to ask you to read anything like or actually say anything that's super nasty but uh, unless it's super nasty yeah you got to read that stuff yeah Na oh, you yeah. can you got to yeah. read the nasty, i really hope i really hope nasty. the holster is uh, very vocal in bed <laughs> we're really gonna find out yeah. we are gonna oh, find yeah, out. yeah so that's just a sample of what's coming up in the off season oh god hey yeah, oh you so know what? it's gonna I, uh, get weird there went i also heard that uh there's a star wars movie coming out we're gonna Oh, yeah. We're going to watch the Star Wars movie and talk about that it. That little movie that All costs right. no money. Yeah. The ultimate <laughs> B movie. The B, B gonna do stands a, for we're big gonna budget, do a, right? Yeah, we're going to do a BB movie, a big BB budget movie. movie. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for listening this season. Uh, we're going to have the new off-season content going to start up here uh, super, super quick. And we can't wait to share the weird shit we're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, until like then... Like Star Wars. Weirdest of shits. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's just go. I'm so tired. Yeah. I'm going to make All it right. a drink. All right, bye, folks. Ooh. All right, bye. Lightweights. Bye. Bye-bye. Brother. What movie would you like to see mo... What, what, <sighs> Let's try that again. Jay. Uh, which movie would you like to see? God damn it.